Welcome to this episode of Stories from the Trenches, brought to you by Natera Performance Solutions. This Stories from the Trenches is entitled Bridging the Gap. A colleague of mine approached me a number of years ago on his long-term athletic development model. In particular, his multi-jump and plyometrics. Like most LTAD models, the model started off with very rudimentary style jumps and landing tasks until the athlete developed skill and developed strength before they could slowly go on over the years to higher intensity plyometric actions. My only problem with this model was the fact that my colleague was working with long jumpers and triple jumpers at the time. And so my question to him was this, are his 13, 14 year old long jumpers and high jumpers, are they doing these rudimentary low intensity jumping exercises, yet then having to in their specific event handle anywhere from eight to 13 times body weight forces in their long jump and triple jumps? And if so, how was he bridging the gap between these rudimentary style landing and jumping activities and the high intensity nature of the competitive event in training or competition itself? And that's where a change in philosophy started to occur. And it's certainly my LTAD model philosophy. If athletes are in their competitive events exposed to very high intensity actions, then we need to be bridging the gap somewhere. That means the bulk of the exposures we're giving the athletes still stay on the skill-based, long-term athletic development approach, yet we can't neglect the fact that we need to prepare them for the higher intensity actions. And therefore doing some small exposures to high intensity plyometrics is highly appropriate, whether they've earned the right or not, whether they look appropriate or not, actually not exposing them only gives them more harm than actually giving them some of the higher intensity work itself. So it's something to consider. You can think about, I guess, a netball player or a football player, a young developing athlete in those sports rather than the long jumper or the triple jumper. So the extreme end being a triple jumper with 13, 14 or 15 times body weight, but even a netballer jumping and landing on one leg um, and exposing herself to seven times body weight forces. Or that football player running at 32 kilometers an hour and having to change direction rapidly in two steps to come back on a 180 degree turn. These are high intensity demands that they're gonna get exposed to in training and competition. And by only doing the lower intensity, earn the right work, you're not actually preparing your athletes effectively. Now I know that might rub people up the wrong way, but for me, it's a fact. And so my developmental models are very much about small, effective doses of really high intensity work before they actually need that work done in the training or competitive environment. Hope this helps and doesn't upset too many people. 